Hi everyone, it's Liam here from A Shot of Wildlife. In this video, I'm going to talk about 10 non-native species that are living wild in the UK. First up, and possibly the most surprising animal in this video, is the raccoon. Now before you think I'm making things up, there have been at least 18 records of raccoons in the wild since 2014, from the north of Scotland to almost the southern coast of England. These are probably escape pets or deliberate releases, but as raccoons can survive in our climate and have already colonised much of mainland Europe, this North American native has the potential to become a real issue if they become established here. They are intelligent opportunists and will eat everything from human scraps to birds, amphibians and small mammals. Next up is the midwife toad. These one and a half inch amphibians are native to most of Europe and Northern Africa but have been introduced to various locations around England and Wales. They are mostly secretive and nocturnal but the males can give themselves away in the breeding season with their alien sounding beeping call. They get their name from their breeding strategy where after fertilisation the male wraps the developing eggs around his back legs and carries them until the tadpoles are ready to hatch, at which point he drops them off into a suitable pool of water. As these are quite small, their potential impact on native species isn't really well known, although it's thought that they may carry diseases that they could pass on to native amphibians. The next species is one of the most famous and well-known non-natives, which you probably expected to see on this list, the grey squirrel. These arboreal rodents were first introduced in the 1880s and soon, with the help of people and their rapid reproduction, spread across most of the country. Unfortunately, their colonisation hasn't came without a cost as they have outcompeted and passed on a fatal disease to the native red squirrel which has subsequently gone extinct in most of its original range. From the best known non-native to one that may be surprising or completely expected depending on which parts of the UK you are familiar with, the ring-necked parakeet. With various stories of how they were introduced, parakeets began being spotted regularly in the wild in the 1970s and had been seen occasionally decades before this. There is now thought to be more than 100,000 of these birds in the country and their numbers are continuing to rise. They are mainly found in close proximity to cities and large towns but they are gradually spreading into the countryside where they come into competition with native species for resources and into conflict with farmers over the damage that they can cause to crops. The next animal on this list is actually two separate species, the yellow-bellied and the red-eared terrapin. Both of these were commonly kept as pets by people who had seen the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles films. What started out as 50p sized aquarium based animals soon outgrew their accommodation and were released to hundreds of sites around the country. They can live for 30 years and seem to do fairly well in urban ponds and freshwater streams and thankfully they haven't been recorded as successfully breeding here yet. If the climate continues to warm this might happen in the future at which point the terrapins could pose a massive threat to freshwater invertebrates and fish. Speaking of fish, our next non-native is the king carp. These were brought to the UK by monks in the 12th century and were originally kept in ponds for food. They soon escaped into the wild and due to a recent surge in popularity for this species as a target for anglers, they have been introduced to waterways around the country. Currently, their main impact seems to be that they can hybridise with the native and endangered crucian carp, which isn't great. In the USA, where they are much more numerous, they are often treated as a pest species and removed from waterways if caught. The next creature is one that you may have heard about and that has received a lot of media attention, the Asian Hornet. These are established in France and since 2016 there have been 21 confirmed sightings and 12 nests found in this country. All of these were promptly destroyed but the likelihood is that these winged predators will eventually colonise this country. Although they may seem menacing to humans, 
their real impact is towards bees and other pollinating insects. They often wait outside of beehives to snatch the bees from the air as they leave. Next up is another well-reported and impactful animal, the American mink. These relatives of the badger and the polecat were brought to the UK to be reared for their fur, but soon escaped into the wild and were first recorded breeding here in 1956. Over the coming years, they were unfortunately released by activists who wanted to protect them from the fur trade, but this bolstered their wild populations and they quickly spread across the country. As they colonised, they nearly wiped out the native water vole and had a massive impact on many other species. Over recent years, there has been a programme to eradicate mink, and in areas where this has been successful, the water vole is gradually recovering and recolonising. From an animal with a massive impact to one which may not have much of a negative impact on native species at all, the mandarin duck. The males of this species are beautiful, and they are gradually spreading across the UK. As their name hints, they are originally from Asia and were brought to this country to decorate private bird collections and surprise surprise, they soon made their way into the countryside. These birds are not found in any great numbers where they do occur and thus far, no studies have shown that they have any detrimental impact to native species. One group of animals that can definitely have a massive impact on native biodiversity is deer. There are six, or well, depending on your definition, perhaps seven species of deer in the wild in the UK, and only two of them are native, the red and the roe. The fallow deer was introduced in the 11th century, the monk jack in 1838, the seeker deer came in 1860, and the Chinese water deer in the 1870s. There is also a herd of reindeer in the Camgorns that were brought here in 1952, but in my mind they are captive and are no more wild than a hill roaming flock of sheep. All the non-native deer that do live wild in this country can have a negative impact by overgrazing and preventing natural succession in woodlands. Now the mathematical amongst you will realise that I've already covered 10 different animals, but here is a bonus creature that might belong on this list. The Koipu. Just like mink, Koipu were imported for the fur trade in the 1920s and 30s. They managed to escape into the wild and colonise the wetland area of the east of England known as the Broads, and by the 1960s it was estimated that there were as many as 200,000 living wild here. They caused massive damage to waterside infrastructure and drainage, and because of this, a campaign was launched to eradicate them. Officially, this was successful, and in 1989, the last recorded wild koipu was captured and shot. However, in recent years there have been anecdotal records from people in the broads who claim to have seen a large koipu-like animal, but I am less than convinced that something the size of 10 rats could remain unnoticed for more than 30 years. So there we go, do you think it's possible that there's still koipu living here in the wild? If you do, let me know in the comments down below. Now if you enjoyed this video, you may also like this other British wildlife video, and if you like that, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.